if it does start, it's just going to be me crying incessantly to myself. Oh, I'm so nervous. I'm going to pull the choke. I want to give it a little bit of gas. Three of those. I don't know. No idea at the moment. Oh my god. All right, I'm gonna crank it. Sammy's not gonna like it. I'm gonna crank it until we smell gas. His fuel pump should be hooked up now, so hopefully we should be pumping gas. Okay. So, well, maybe it's gonna take a minute for it to come forward, you know? We need to look and see if there's any in the filter. Which there, there's a lot of sediment in the filter. Look at that. Oh, yeah. It's like mud in there. Number one, for your filter's proper operation, you don't want it to have a, a beach worth of sand inside of it, you know? That's not what you want for your filter. Also, you want to have it oriented the right way, and it was backwards. So that'll stop you from flowing stuff, but I think we'll just go and snag on a new filter because uh, that's gross. All right, we're gonna try to pump some fuel through here. I'm gonna get a new filter. Yeah. Get rid of the cranks. Keep going. Filling up. Filling up still. Keep going. Up. All right. We got to pour it out now. We're going to see what happens. More than likely, it's nothing, but we're still going to do it. And also get ready to drop the phone and pick up the fire. Okay. Probably should have filled up the bowls first too before we put spark to it. But we're doing that now, but you know. I mean it's got fuel on the It doesn't sound any different than it has every time we tried it without spark or fuel. So. Up the uh, we got fuel oh, yeah. leaking. Leak. All right, we'll try with a little bit of choke on. It's still not gonna do it. Oh. Those are different noises. Right there. She's sucking. Yeah. Well, yeah. So that we've choked it off. So now we're hearing the results of the the you know the chokers hmm? being closed. The choker jokers. The, cho the choker things. Things that do the, 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 the back here with the. Butterfly choking. They choke the butterflies. Um, Not the butterflies. Well, it all smells like gas. It's got a sniffer out there. Yeah. Bald. I don't know. Uh, uh, yank. Uh, <laughs> damn it. Uh. <laughs> which way? Which way does it go that I can't turn it anymore? You know, like is that as far as I can turn it that way, and then it could come back this way. There we go. Now she's moving less, but which way to start with? <laughs> Just max her out one way and then do the other way. It's, you know, people who know motors will know this. Forward is advance, reverse is retard, as, if you're talking clockwise and, and counterclockwise. So we would be pretty far, I mean, we are pretty far retarded, but, you know, the motor would be as well. I wonder if it wants me to get it sometimes. Yeah, it's floor it. Like, uh huh. That's a thing. That's too far retarded, though, right? Yeah. It smells like it. I wish yeah. you could smell from it's, the it's, video. Oh, yeah. Smell the vision would be good, but it's burning something. That's for sure. Here we go. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> This is funny. You're making noises, but you're, you're not making, you know. Did we hook up? Oh, that's why. What is it? She's just open. Oh, right yeah. Oh, no, it's way open. Yeah. So it's probably not even going to run good anyway because it's. Because it's open? Yeah. I mean, it should it should get going at least, but yeah, it's, it's not going to like it. 
less, out the carburetors. That's less bangy, isn't it? I like that. That looks good, doesn't it? Look yeah, it does. Well, it's got the right, just got the right look about it. Do you want me to try and work the throttle while you Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's so funny. Have you ever heard anything like that? No. Before? I'm not an expert, clearly, because I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but it says, doesn't sound like all of them are firing to me. Yeah, it's... You know? I would think that we would hear a... Bop, 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 bop. Well, we had that at the one of the first times. Yeah. Yeah. But it was coming out the car, right? Yeah. We got fire! We got stop. It's coming out of the header. It was just straight fire. It was fire. just on fire. <laughs> it was straight fire coming out the header. So we're lighting things on fire. Yeah, but I actually tested these, all of these plug wires to make sure that everybody's sparkling. So maybe we should do that. Also, my spark plug gap could be wrong. Maybe I just took them out of the box and put them in there. Sorry. That's yeah. what I do. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure they would be good enough to make it run. All right, we've got the timing light out to see if we can see anything with that at all. Um, maybe we will, maybe we won't. We'll definitely see more fire from over there. So, all right, let it have it. All right. Not even close. It's tough to say where where off it is. You know, I have no idea where where it is off, but it but it seems to be probably 180 out. So, if it's 180 out, do you just distribute, redistribute the distributions, and go 180 the other direction with the distributor? All right. So this guy over here reminded me that the distributor could be off because getting ahead of ourselves, we never actually lined her up the top dead center and put the distributor in the right way so that the rotor faces number one. Well, now it's dead nuts to number one. So now maybe the timing light will do us some good when we go to time, but first we gotta, we want it to start. And we think we might be a lot closer to that now. All right. Come on, Dale. Contact. Well, less bangs. You got nothing. What do we forget? <laughs> How about a little oh. gas? Yeah. No gas. I fired out the carb a little bit. Atomized gasoline. Is the other carb popping at all? It's these two mainly. This one. Oh, I saw the front one go. I saw yeah. that one go. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, we're doing, you know, things, but not great things. So we're gonna. We're gonna hook up the light again. Yeah. Hook up the timing light again. Just see how far off that dot is. Oh. It's real close now. So, in typical in a hurry fashion, I did not gap the plugs when I put them in. So, Miles is finding that they are all tight. So they need to be gapped between 0.9 and one millimeter. And we have that set now on the feelers, and that's how tight they are. They're about half of that. Mm. So. I, can that keep it from running? I don't know, but you know what? Every little bit helps. Our assumption is that we can't have the distributor 180 degrees out because the rotor is pointing at number one at top dead center. So we don't have it out. What to do, what to do, what to do. <laughs> that was literal fire. Yeah, that's <laughs> There's fire coming out the other end now. Well, I'm just gonna choke it all the way. Okay, try it. it literally sounds like a cartoon car, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like the wacky cartoon character guy would come driving up and it'd be like, <laughs> yeah, The thought from Jake Langer down in Oregon, he said, uh, maybe you've got an exhaust valve stuck open. but. I kind of feel like it would run on three and then also spit fire if, if that was the case, but I don't know. I just don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll test every one of these cylinders and make sure that it's all right. Yeah, she got about 40. Not good. She ain't going on. 130. 
messed up, I think we're talking about stuck valve in one. Stop. Guess. 140. Yep. <laughs> yes, he's better. How did he do that? So, we're going to pull off this valve cover. This one has a hundred more than one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. All right. I use this here camera guy. And I stuck it down cylinder one to figure out what was wrong, what's causing us to have an open valve. And there looks to be a piece of wire sitting on top of the piston. So before I go any further, I'm trying to extract that piece of wire. So I got a vacuum. It's definitely not gonna work, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Right. Give it a bit of Maybe I'll... Uh... Maybe I'll crank the piston back up. I cranked it down so I can get a good look at it. So I'll just crank it around again, back to top dead center, and then uh, I'll take, I, that'll give me a better shot at sucking it out of there. It should be as close as it can get to the hole right here. And of course the exhaust manifold's open. Let's just choke it off. And that'll keep air from coming in that side. Try to make air come in the exhaust side and then suck straight up. I don't know, I don't know what's right here, but that's what I'm doing. You always want to suck gas into your vacuum. Pressed and held, it is now recording. Down the hole we go. Oh boy. You know what? I think we might have got it. That would literally be a miracle. There's something nasty sitting. Is that it still? What's that? It looks like a worm. Gross. At this point, it's so mashed and burnt, and, but it did move around. And I poked it. I'll tell you what, though. Top of the piston's looking good. I don't think that we have... I mean, it'd be hard to tell if there's dings where the valves go because they're over on the side, but... Whatever this is in here, I don't think it's... Uh, too scary. We've got stuff in the cylinder. I did verify that the valve is moving on number one, so that's good. Even though the compression's at 40, the valve is moving up and down. Exhaust valve, that is. I can't speak for the intake valve. We're going to pray that it's okay for right now. Lesson learned for me before you start an engine after having the plugs out in and out, in and out, in and out a lot. Probably ought to clean out the cylinders as much as you can, and that's what we're going to do today. So I bought some tools. Let me show them to you. Number one tool in the arsenal. The gun. It's not, there's no air right now. But I bought this one with the long pokey on it so we can get down in there and swish around real gentle like on the, on the piston, on the top of the piston, the piston rings and try to push it out while simultaneously using this tiny vacuum on the exhaust port to whisk them right out of there. So we'll, we'll close up the chokes to try to cut off the airflow from the carburetor and we'll blow and we'll suck. The next step, because there's more than likely a piece of wire stuck in the valve seat somewhere now. This is copper. It's a soft metal. It may just get smashed into it over time, but for now, I feel like it's holding the valve open. So for that, there's a couple of things. There's a tube brush set from Harbor Farber. Uh, really tiny, nice little, uh, you know, uh, brass uh, brushes in there. Very gently, I think I'm going to go through the exhaust port hole and try to get it in between the valve and the seat and just scrub as much as I can around through there. Um, that's really all I got. And I also bought these pick tools. Maybe they'll be useful. I don't know, but I don't have any like this. So I figured why not have some picks. Then Charlie's idea of taking the, the, the brushes, the long brushes and maybe scraping around the edge of the, the piston on the top to see if we can get anything to come out that way while we got the vacuum in the other side. And then my idea of taking the brush, and, and Charlie too kind of said this, and trying to get it up in the valve and seeing how much of the, the valve seat area I can clean out. That's what we're doing. All because of my stupidity, but I'm going to get started. You can watch it on the time lapse. 
and uh, I'll, I'll break in whenever I think I have something important to say. But I'm just going to get at it and hopefully clear this sucker out so we can make it run. I think I'll, I think I might have to skip plan C for now and go straight to plan D, which is, um, this is a four part plan. These aren't all separate individual plans. We're just going to do all of them. So I'm going to try to take this brush, stick it in through the exhaust port and see if I can s just slowly and gently scrape on the valve and the seat with the, with the brush. I, by God, I think I'm in there. Is this just going to put more bristles in there? <laughs> That'd be really, really sad. The problem here is I can't, I'm not going to be able to get much of that valve and seat clean with this, really only this side. So the other side's still just sort of going to be a mystery. Right now, we're just leaking because we're open. You hear that? It's just coming right out the exhaust because I'm not cranked around to top dead center. So let's crank it around to top dead center and then see if we can get it to hold any compression. Uh, this, this isn't closed at all. Now that's closed. See? That's interesting. Okay, well, now we know what closed is. Uh, <laughs> let me get you a look here. I'll use this camera. That's dumb. There's my dot for top dead center. There's where we're at, you know, closed. So maybe the valves don't close until they're past top dead center, but it should be closed now and ready for a bang. Yeah, I can feel it in the exhaust port again. Wish I could feel where it's better, where it's coming from. Like which side of the valve. I hear it coming out of the carb too, though. All right, well, maybe we're not closed all the way yet, so let's close it. We're on the intake. Now, there's nothing coming out the exhaust. Now, I won't say nothing. i got to figure out what's up with top dead center. It's right back on the top dead center mark. But I know for a fact that the exhaust valve is open right now at top dead center. I like to do this every once in a while, remind myself of how an engine works, just the basics because it can kind of help you figure some things out. It can also make me second-guess myself, but we're going to do it again anyway. So, suck, squish, bang, blow. From top dead center, the piston comes down, the intake valve opens. We do the sucking. Fuel and air come in. A very nice mixture. At the bottom of that stroke, both the intake and the exhaust valves... Ah, that's it. We're looking for bang, aren't we? So 180 degrees out of this, whenever the piston comes back around again to the top, that's when it should be banging and, and nothing should be attempting to open, right? It's completely at rest. The cam should not be open. I'm going to try to get it there. Let's just take that off. And now we can watch our cams, our lobes, spinning around. This makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? You can just look right at what the cam's doing and know exactly what you're supposed to be doing. I, I mean... I just don't know. Really, I don't. Look at it. <sighs> Maybe nothing was wrong. Who knows? Maybe I dislodged something. I don't know. I'm going to do another compression test now. That's what I'm going to do. The old-fashioned way. And see if it comes up higher than the 40 that we got before. Well, I did a compression test. Uh, you couldn't hear it because I didn't have the microphone on. But it, it had 130 uh, pounds. PSI. So, did I do it? Maybe I did it. I must have, because it's done. Did I do it? I did it. Let's check the uh, distributor. I want to verify top dead center, power stroke, and make sure that we're pointed at number one without 180 degrees out. This is just visual verification that the cam is ready to roll over to the intake so it can suck again. That means that we just, we just blew, right? We just got done rolling the... Uh, intake off here. So now we're going to suck. Oh, we're not ready to blow yet though. Okay. So we're, we're, we are half out. Yes. Okay. Uh, so the assumptions were correct. Everyone said, uh, Charlie kept telling me, I think you got the distributor, uh, turned halfway. And I think I actually do. So we're going to roll it over here, back around the top dead center again until my mark comes back around top dead center. And now we're going to take a look at the distributor because now we're ready to fire off the spark. And where's it at? 
It is 180 degrees out. Like everybody said that I had it. I am such an idiot. I put the valve cover back on, plugs back in, plug wires back on. I you know, verified the distributor was 180 degrees out. Now that's better. I put the manifold back on. Uh, it's tightened down the distributor enough, but I can still turn it. Uh, what else did I do? I don't know. I can't remember. I'm very excited because I think we're going to start this car. And you can tell that I got high hopes for this particular startup because uh, I'm making sure everything's rolling. Nobody else is here to help me, so... I'm sad about that, but if it does start, it's just going to be me crying incessantly to myself. Oh, God save me. Oh, I'm so nervous. More nervous than when we did it the first time. I'm going to pull the choke. I want to give it a little bit of gas. Three of those. I don't know. No idea at the moment. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god, it's running! It's shaking so bad. It's gonna knock the battery off of its wood block. Get back! Oh my god. This means so much more to me than just starting a motor. I wish my boys were here. I need somebody to hug. Seven, eight years I've had this motor. I've had some sort of Celica in this garage, and every garage following me around the country for ten years. And I've had this motor in two of them now. And that's the first time it's ever ran. Charlie rebuilt this motor seven years ago. God bless him. I don't know what I'd do without uh, the good Reverend Charlie Bigsby. Oh, my God. It runs. This is not for YouTube and for views and shit. This is for me. This is for me and for everybody who ever helped me on this. If you ever helped me, given me a part, sold me something, had kind words about the car, talked to me about it, loved it, once we get it going again, you, me, and everybody, we're all going for a ride. I'm going to run it now. If I can see through this salty discharge. I mean, I already, you know what? Here's the deal. I was so convinced that this whole head was going to have to come off of here and everything was going to have to be rebuilt that I already did the end of the video. And I, I was like, this is it. This is the end. It's going to take more months to do this and we're never going to get this. And then now look at me day later, one day later and it runs. So how about instead I do the ending now and I make you a decent video for once. We did it. Dale runs, but this is just the beginning. Definitely not the end of our journey. There is an autocross in 23, four days, Kansas City Region SCCA autocross. I want Dale to be there. We're going to have to bust ass, mainly on getting parts to get him there. But that's the next plan. So the next video, you come back, you're going to watch us put on the cooling system get everything all rigged up and finalized, all the wiring cleaned up. Everything's going to be done in tip-top shape to send Dale at the next Kansas City Region Autocross. And you can watch him rip and see how he does, watch how he breaks, and watch how we fix him again. Because that's how we do. We build them. We break them. Wait, no. We build them. We race them. We break them. We fix them. We race them again. So that's what we're doing. What you need to do is go out and find your own Apex. Because, hey, it's better late than never. I'm going to try to run it now long enough to put the timing light on it. Can't run it for very long because there's no cooling.